Hey guys, how's it hanging? Charlie here, your coach of the São Paulo Syndacles for the IBL, coming to you guys with the team prep for the grand finals of the IBL. So we actually got a chance to rematch Shell Shock. That's that, that's pretty cool. Uh, last time we, we went out with a sour sour loss because our Ente got paralyzed by Prankster Volbit. So we're definitely doing our best for this week to pick up a W and hopefully bring out the win uh, for the entire championship for the IBL. So we'll see, uh, because his team is actually pretty pretty scary. To start things off, let's take a look at Shellshock's draft. Kirin B is a very scary mod, can be physical, special or even mixed and can most definitely be a scarfer and even a substitute set. This thing hits like a nuke and has coverages like Earth Power, Focus Blast, Fusion Bolt, Iron Head and Shadow Claw. And Slowbro with its natural bulk and regenerator ability can be problematic to deal with, having access to recover and slack off and set up in Calm Mind, can be utility bulk with Toxic or T-Wave and also can set up screens and even facade if you want to try and whittle it down, so that's problematic. Then Snorlax, another great wall this time around, more specially defensive with its thick fat ability to eat up our fire type or ice type moves and can even be an immunity ability to prevent itself from getting toxic. And it can be a Curse Rest Sleep Talk set with Return Body Slam or EQ, or even a Choice Bandit set with Facade, Pursuit Trap, or the ele Elemental Punches if he wants to. This thing can also self destruct, retaliate, and also set up Belly Drums as well. So that's something to look out for. Then Sableye with its Prankster ability. Uh, the perfect utility mon having access to taunt, recover and knock off to hinder down mon's usabilities and get life back aside from the usual T-Wave toxic will wisp screens and it can also go for sucker punch priori, set up calm mines and nasty plots then scavalier is 4 time weeks to our main traps but that doesn't stop it from being a great both offensive and defense AV mon uh, it can pursue trap us, set up sword stances, rest sleep talk for recover with usability and go for step iron head flinches. Then mag mortar can be a great wall with an assault vest but also works great as a wall breaker. It can willow and toxic for utility and its thunderbolt, focus blast, psychic, iron tail and rock slide coverage is nothing to laugh at with such high special attack stats you can even throw your preferred hidden power on it to finish its set and now onto his mega, the mega manetric that thing is power with 135 base stats on both its special attack and speed combined with its initiative in Volt Switch and awesome coverage in Flamethrower and HP Ice and being able to even Magnet Rise, this thing can be a problem. It shuts down our Tundras before uh, Mega Evolving with its Lightning Rod ability and after Mega Evolving it gets Intimidate to hinder our physical traps usability on the field. And Garchomp as well as Curium B uh, can have so many different sets, it's, it's scary just for its unpredictableness. It can be a Sub Swords then set with a Scarf, a Choice Band uh, or an offensive Stealth Rock set and even a fully tanky. And Fire Blast, Fire Fang, Iron Tail, Aqua Tail, Shadow Claw and Poison Jab makes for great coverages for this dragon here. And then Togekiss, his defogger and also a super super special Pokemon. Can be very problematic with King's Rock paired with its Serene Grace ability and some like Air Slash flinches. Uh, it has recovery in Roost, setup in Nasty Plot, and great utility in Heal Bell and T-Wave. And then 
Heat only fake out normal jam boosted unburden. This thing hits hard and its speed gets up to like 300 if I'm not mistaken with a speed nature. It outspeeds even our fastest mon with a timid nature and a scarf. And that's problematic. This thing is also his spinner but can put in so much work uh, being fully offensive with high jump kick, knockoff, sucker punch priority and pursuit trap maybe. Now onto his last mon, the Volbeat. Serves the same purpose as the Sableye with its prankster ability, being able to priority wave, tailwind, anchor, etc. So now to start things off, I just want to say first that we watched Shell's match against a magic activator for the finals and we noticed that he used the attract strategy on that game. So I went back on his videos to make sure his Garchomp was always brought as a female and this week we kinda can avoid this strategy because we're bringing a Heron team. All females but the genderless and for some reason dangerous that can only be a male. So our first pick is Cephalo Girl or Cephalotarax Vaporeon, the standard physical wall set with Water Absorb, Lefty's max HP, max defense and 4 special attack with a bold nature. And for this week we're rocking the full cleric set with no roar this time. With Wish and Heal Bell and then Scald and Ice Beam as our offensive moves. We never really brought Ice Beam but we thought this week it might come in handy against the Garchomp and the Togekiss and actually Cephalothorax we have a plan for her for this week, because we are leading with her, expecting a shell to lead either Garchomp or Mega Manectric, and in case he leads Garchomp and goes for like Stealth Rocks or something of that kind, we will just dish off an Ice Beam, and if he leads with his Mega Manetric and goes for a Thunderbolt or a Volt Switch, we are immediately going into our Gardevoir to trace his Lightning Rod ability because it traces before it Megas, so we actually can get to plus one with that, so I hope this strategy works out. Next is Constantina, our Constantine our Gliscor rocking the Hypercutter ability and holding the Yacha Berry for survivability. Her spread is 248 HP, 100 attack, 140 defense and 16 speed with an impish nature. 16 speed is to outspeed uninvested a defensive Garchomp then 100 attack guarantees the KO on Mega Manatric and deals around 90% on Hitmonlee but also hits hard his non-flying types or like non-levitating switches. Uh, 140 defense was to take an Ice Punch for Sn from Snorlax and also tank his hits from Garchomp with no problem. And two 248 HP ensures us that we're bulky enough and able to enter rocks without dying with an odd number for our total HP. And his moves are Earthquake, Roost, Defog and Toxic. EQ is here for Mega Manetric, Magmortar and Hitmonlee, but also does around 40% to an offensive Stealth Rocks Garchomp set. And we decided to bring Bruce this time around to make sure Gliscor is alive to defog till uh, the moment that Shellshock has no ways to set them anymore. And Toxic is here in case EQ isn't our best bet or we're against Togekiss because we can't EQ that. And next up we have Desiree, our Gardevoir with the Trace ability and holding the Assault Vest. Her spread is 60 HP, 248 special attack and 200 special defense with a modest nature. Uh, the special attack investment is because it doesn't change from the max uh, special attack and it, it allows us to invest a little more bulk on her. Then 200 special defense allows us to switch safely into Slowbro and Togekiss and switching into 
Kirin Black is also a possibility, but it's risky and it might just be less measured for us to deal with. And 60 HP is so she's less of a glass cannon and pairing it up with the special defense investments, she's kind of a bulkier Desiree. And her moves are Psy Shock, Focus Blast, Moon Blast and HP Fire. Psy Shock is here solely to hit Snorlax on its weak point, which is its physical bulk. The Moonblast dishes tremendous damage to anything but Scavalier and certainly guarantees the kill on Hitmonlee. A Focus Blast is also for Snorlax but also hits Kirin Black and HP Fire is our coverage in case he brings this Cavalier. And then we have Waffles, our Entei, with the pressure ability and holding the choice band, our standard banded Entei with max attack, max speed and 4 HP with an adamant nature. His moves are Flare Blitz, Stone Edge, Bulldoze and E-Speed. And that's because Entei's move pool is quite limited, so to get that ex extra coverage on him we kinda throw some uh, things like Stone Edge and Bulldoze, but uh, Flare Blitz here is for Scavalier, Volbit and Kirin Black, but is, it also hits decently a good part of his switchings. Stone Edge is our coverage for the Togekiss, just in case. Then Bulldoze as well is just in case for Monetric and Magmortar. And then E-Speed is for the Bandit Priori, we just like. And our second to last pick is going to be Maintenance, our Metagross with the clear body ability holding the Shuka Berry for this week to eat up a new kill from Garchomp and kill it back hopefully. Uh, his spread is 204 HP, 56 attack and 248 special defense with a careful nature. So the attack investment is all he needs to KO Kieran Black with a combination of Meteor Mesh and Bullet Punch and this combo also KOs Hitmonlee and Togekiss. So we were kind of free to invest more on his special defense and HP so he could be more, more of a wall and an offensive threat for this game. And aside from Meteor Mesh and Bullet Punch we also have Hammer Arm for Snorlax and EQ for uh, speed uninvested Magmortar and for the Mega Manetric as well. And our last pick, but, but certainly not the least, is going to be Moonlight, our forever Mayo Thunderous Therian. With the Vote Absorb ability and holding the Life Orb for this week, his spread is 252 special attack, 216 speed, and 40 HP. So this speed is to guarantee we outspeed the fastest, the fastest of Kirin Blacks without a scarf and it was pointless investing fully on his speed because we wouldn't outspeed max speed Garchomp and Mega Monetric from the beginning. And the 40 remaining points go to his HP just for survivability and his moves are Thunderbolt, Focus Blast, HP Fire and Vote Switch. Thunderbolt is to dish the most damage with a stab to hit Slowbro and Togekiss very hard with a Life Orb and Focus Blast again because I'm just too scared of Curse Blast, okay? <laughs> and HP Fire is our coverage for Scavalier once again and Vote Switch is for initiative if Garchomp is down and Mega Manetric is already Mega Evolved so that's gonna be it for our last team prep for the whole IBL season guys and I hope you are as excited as I am for this finals match and I hope you all can go into there and cheer for us and I highly recommend you guys also to check out Shellshock's uh, side of the battle and just his channel overall because uh, to, made it, to make it through here he has to be a very very good battler and uh, I kind of uh, confirmed that from our last match in which he brought the Volbeat and that was his absolute win con with the prankster ability 
So uh, I'm pretty excited for this match and we'll see you guys later on today with the finals for the IBL. So see you guys there. Bye!